Uh, is, there, is there a link that I can tweet or? Yep. Uh, hold on, I just it should be on Binance. Okay, we're live. Thank you for joining us, Susie. We're live on Binance YouTube and Binance Twitter. Okay, hold on, let me tweet this link out. <laughs> Give me one second. Sure. All right. All right. Um, sure. Let's go ahead. Yeah. I mean, let's make this session a little bit more interactive. Before it was always a monologue, monologue for the first part, which is actually quite difficult for me um, because I got to jump through all these topics and the mono monologue is a little bit more difficult. So, uh, well, today I have um, uh, uh, Karina as the um, uh, moderator. So maybe you can queue off some of the questions and it's, you'll, be make, you'll make it a lot easier for me. Absolutely. So see, there are lots of questions on Twitter. Our community is wondering, what do you think about the current market situation? Yeah, so um, on the current market, like, well, a few days ago, we experienced a very significant downturn uh, or drawdown um, for some for Bitcoin is around 50 percent for Binance, for Binance coin from the previous all time high, which is six, uh, six hundred ninety dollars. It was 60, 70 percent. Um, but I want to say, look, um, this kind of um, um, corrections or retracements are common. Uh, to be honest, nobody knows if this is the beginning of the bear market, but now we kind of know that the bond market is bouncing back. Um, so kind of unlikely, but don't take my advice for it. Um, we never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, uh, crypto ha do have high volatility. And um, to be honest, in the last six months or a year or so, we have seen very little volatility. We've only seen volatility in the upward direction, which is actually very fortunate. But 50% drawdowns are very common in crypto like a couple of years ago, well, three or four years ago. Um, and it's more common before that. So I would say um, it's very normal market behavior. Um, nobody knows what was caused it. Uh, somebody blame it. Some people blame Elon Musk for starting this sort of uh, 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 retracement. Some people blame the weather. Uh, who, who knows? Um, so none of those things are, can be proven. Um, it's a mass psychology uh, market. So there's, most, there's probably a couple hundred million people involved in the crypto market now, and they can all trade and their trades make up the market. So, uh, but crypto market is highly volatile. So if you're investing in the crypto market, do take uh, precautions or proper risk management measures so that you don't get affected uh, severely by this type of drawdowns. So don't invest money that you have to use for to pay your next month's rent. Uh, for crypto investments, I highly recommend only investing money with money that you don't need for the next few years. Um, so you have a, uh, uh, it, it should be money that you don't really need in, 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 a, uh, in any urgent sense. So um, yeah, do, do proper risk management. Um, it's kind of normal market. Um, Bitcoin, uh, BNB, Bitcoin have gone up like three, five X since the beginning of the year um, from the previous all time high. And uh, Binance coin have went 20, 10, 20 X from the previous all time highs uh, of, 10, uh, of $30 to 600, also almost $700. So some correction is uh, not all normal. So uh, markets fluctuates both ways. So do, uh, do, do take a proper risk management and protect yourself. Great advice. And here's our first question from Crypto Future user. What do you think of all these new meme coins? Um, so to be very frank, I'm not a big, uh, I really, I enjoy memes, but I don't, I'm not a meme coin kind of guy. Um, so uh, I like coins with utility. Um, there are very famous people, Elon Musk, uh, who like coins with, uh, who like meme coins. And um, for various reasons, I think we are in a decentralized world. Anybody can like what, whatever, whichever coin they want. Um, we have freedom there. And uh, uh, so for me, I'm personally not hugely into those. And um, but for uh, as a as a market uh, as a market was as a liquidity um, uh, platform, we do try to provide access for people to all to all kind of crypto. Um, it does not. So we do list uh, in a Dogecoin from a long time ago when we li we uh, listed uh, Shiba Coin, which is a little bit controversial. Some people in the community don't like it. Some people like it. Uh, you generally the guys who have the coin likes it. The guy who doesn't have the coin doesn't like it. Um, that's that's very often the case. But look, just because we list the coin does not mean that you have to buy it. Um, so um, from a Binance perspective, we just uh, look at number of users. 
So for uh, for example, for she uh, for Shiba Coin. Um, we actually look at the coin market cap data. Um, there's a very large n- number of users who put that on the on their watch list. Um, so that's actually a pretty telltale sign of um, uh, 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 of of a coin which have a large following for whatever reason. I I don't know what the reason is. So um, I'm not against them. I'm very agnostic. I'm not uh, personally. I don't invest in them, but uh, them, but uh, uh, as I do try to provide access to uh, any crypto that's popular. Thank you. And going back to Binance ecosystem and Binance smart chain community, are there any interesting facts and updates that you'd like to share? Oh yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, so um, there's quite a few data points that's being uh, um, uh, that's prepared here. So um, on May 14th, uh, the Binance smart chain hit what, uh, 11 million in daily transaction volume. It's actually very close to 12 million. Um, it's the all-time high, and on that day, uh, Binance Smart Chain did six x of uh, Ethereum uh, volume. So um, um, it, go, it shows that the transaction amount or the number of users are quite probably higher. Well, uh, transaction amount is definitely higher on uh, Binance Smart Chain. Um, and whereas the uh, Ethereum average fees for that day was like nine ten dollars per transaction, whereas BS fees are as low as four cents. So it's about two hundred times cheaper. So, um, and Binance uh, Smart Chain uh, consists of about 600 projects right now, and they, um, including 90 plus NFT projects. So, um, all of these are very exciting. I think basically the numbers there, um, uh, uh, people are using it. Um, you can choose to use it or not. Um, I really love it. Uh, Binance Smart Chain is not my project, but I'm a big shiller. I'm a big promoter of it. I do endorse Binance Smart Chain. Um, it is affiliated with Binance in, in, in a lot of ways, namely because the Binance Smart Chain uses BNB as, uh, to pay for gas fees. Um, so um, uh, we are heavily incentivized to promote it. And um, but I believe it is one of the best, uh, easiest to use chain with low fees, high capacity, um, and relative and and and, uh, re- and very safe. So um, I encourage people to to look at it if you haven't. Um, BSC is also very energy efficient. Um, that seems to be a very important topic given that Elon Musk has um, uh, put a lot of attention on energy efficiency of crypto. Um, so uh, Binance Smart Chain uses um, POS uh, 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 consensus mechanisms, and uh, it doesn't use much electricity at all. So um, yeah, so um, that's that. Um, Binance Smart Chain has some um, small issues recently, uh, also teething problems, uh, in the sense that you actually experience some congestion here and there, um, not the entire network. Um, the Binance Smart Chain community was able to fix most of the congestions very quickly. Um, but as a was as any sort of ecosystem that's ex, uh, experiencing exponential growth, um, there's always different points where they will experience congestions. Um, there were congestions on the blockchain explorers. There were congestions on different nodes. Um, there were congestions on some of the sort of wallets um, and also um, um, the uh, the servers that providing queries to the uh, RPC uh, to providing servers to RPC queries. Um, but the blockchain itself uh, is actually pretty sound, and I know that the BSC community is doing quite a lot to improve performance there. So um, teething problems, nothing major, and I think they will they will continue to make it more and more efficient. So um, yeah, that's that's kind of the uh, uh, current um, at a very high level with the, the the limit of what I know for Binance Smart Chain. This is impressive, but what about Binance itself and the customer support? Yeah, so um, we have experienced a lot of issues on customer support uh, in the past, I would say, uh, six months or more. Um, we have seen exponential growth in our number of users, uh, especially active users, they're probably more than 10x. And uh, we just couldn't uh, scale customer support that quickly. Um, but I do have positive, very positive news to share. Um, we have reduced our customer support backlog from 80k uh, requests to about now almost a few hundred a day. Uh, a few a few hundred is basically close to zero. Uh, basically, there's no backlog uh, overall, um, especially for the major languages. Um, there are still some backlog in terms of uh, what we call layer two support. If you have a rep, if, if you have if you experience an issue that's rel- relatively not common. And uh, we actually need some more longer time to service it. Uh, we escalate that those requests to level two. On the level two side, we still have a couple hundred to a couple thousand, uh, depending on which type uh, uh, backlog. But it's much much better than before. 
so we we actually have more than five uh, x our customer support team size, which uh, over the last six months, very difficult. Um, uh, uh, admittedly, many of the, our customer support agents are relatively new. Um, they have been trained, but they may not be the most uh, experienced crypto guru. Um, but they're learning on the job uh, uh, now. So we do hope for uh, for you to have some understanding. Um, but they do try their best to to help, and they will learn over time. In, t in addition to increasing uh, number of agents, we actually have done many things to improve the, uh, to reduce the re need for uh, going through customer support. Uh, we have revamped a lot of our uh, products so that we don't you, you don't necessarily need to go to customer support uh, to 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 uh, even even in some trickier uh, even when you experience some trickier issues. We've tried to make. Um, we have tried to make an AI bot that understands what issues you have experiencing with your account. For example, if you somehow have a deposit error or withdrawal error, um, the AI bot actually reads about that information on your account and can interact interact with you in a relatively meaningful way. It's still, to be honest, the AI the AI is still pretty dumb. Um, so we're we're still working on to improve that. Um, so we are working uh, on this uh, issue on multiple angles. We have also um, Rolled out a very new uh, customer support uh, uh, system internally. So before we used Zendesk, um, but now we have totally decommissioned that. We now, um, if you use the online uh, customer support, it's an online chat in, in the Binance website or on the Binance app. Uh, is 100% homegrown. Uh, now it's uh, fully integrated with our backend systems. You can access your property, your account data, etc., which we wasn't able to do before with a third-party tool. So um, the tool is heavily optimized now. Uh, it it is more efficient. We're still working on it. Um, so there's a, a, um, so those are the sort of a few things we're we're doing. There's a lot more we're doing, but. Uh, we acknowledge that we have uh, we we had and still have uh, customer support problems, and there's a lot of room for improvement. But we have made significant advancements in that area, and we'll continue to do so. So we thank you for I thank you very much for your patience and support, and we'll continue to increase our customer support. We recognize as a problem, customer support is one of the shining points for Binance, uh, and was one of the key uh, success factors for Binance when we first started. And we recognize that uh, we lag behind a little bit in, uh, for the past little while, but we are very committed to bring that back to the level where we had it before. So we want to have very solid, very responsive, very good customer support uh, for, for this industry. Uh, we're still working on it with our customer support is still not at the level that we want it to be. Uh, it's much better than a month ago, uh, but we're still working on it. Thank you, CZ. And going forward with Binance updates, uh, today was announcement about NFT platform. Would you like to share more about this and any exciting projects are that are coming up? Yeah, sure. So um, yeah, I mean, um, so we. Uh, uh, well, this is something that I couldn't share before, but I guess now it's public. I just retweeted a few tweets just before this, um, like literally you know, fifteen minutes ago. Um, and so we got Luis Capati, who's a music, who's a very famous musician, uh, announced. Uh, we got uh, uh, Trevor Jones, who's a very famous artist. We got Michael Oven. Um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, American guys probably know them. Uh, very famous f f uh, football star. Um, this is actually a very long list. Um, this is something I was trying to say before. Um, about our NFT, NFT platforms or the sort of the potential for NFT markets. Uh, when I look at this potential pipeline for the sort of artists and content creators and business partners, um, I was just very impressed. It seems like everybody under the sun, or well, at least everybody, everybody who's relatively famous under the sun, are thinking about issuing NFTs. Um, I was just. So yeah, so um, I think basically um, um, everything that's valuable, every content, everything can be represented in NFTs. Um, I I'm not guaranteeing that I'm not guaranteeing that the NFT, NFT industry will be huge, but I, this is the first time we now have a way for we now have a better way for content creators, artists, musicians um, uh, to uh, mon to monetize their work uh, in any way they well in in a much more flexible way than they had before. So uh, I'm really, really um, uh, 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 bullish about the NFT market. And um, this is something I did not understand and I did not realize before until our team showed me uh, what we're building and the, uh, the, 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 the business development pipelines. 
So uh, for, at Binance, we will continue to strive to continue to empower creators to share their talent with the world and be and at the same time being able to monetize their artwork um, through the uh, through NFTs and hopefully with the Binance M NFT platform. So um, yeah, so. Um, yeah, so that uh, so we I believe we also have the innovator creators program um, uh, for the Binance NFT platform. Um, so creators can share their work uh, with the large community and receive ninety nine of, of the proceeds from their first NFT sales and one percent loyalty payments for all subsequent transactions. So um, with today to date, we have received more than two thousand applications and. Uh, uh, we're looking forward for more applicants, uh, but the program ends May 31st. Well, the application ends uh, May 31st, so um, do apply uh, if you want if you're interested. Um, I actually don't know where the link is on our website anymore, uh, but I'm sure you can find it if you if you're very interested. Um, so yeah, and lastly, we actually have also have a NFT teaching program, well, NFT teaching, NFT teaching, uh, where um, it's an educational event to teach users uh, how to participate uh, in the different NFT uh, 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 or about more generic NFT concepts, how to participate in NFT platforms, etc. And um, there's also a certificate given, certificate given, um, and there's a, uh, I guess there's a quiz uh, with an NFT score, or an NFT exam, NFT score. So um, yeah, be sure to check it out. And um, I think uh, the NFT market is going to be pretty interesting. Thank you. And there was another update about a Binance Hotels. What about yes. this part? Yes. So the Binance Hotel, um, the, uh, the <laughs> not the Binance Hotel, the the hotels uh, application in Binance app uh, is a place where. Uh, it's a third-party mini app built by Travala. Uh, Travala is a portfolio of Binance, but we are a minority shareholder in Travala. Um, so Travala is, built, uh, is the first guinea pig that they built. Um, There's the first merchant that onboarded into the Binance marketplace, um, uh, which is part of Binance Pay. Um, all of these jargons are very confusing, but it's a marketplace where third parties, you can build um, mini programs within the Binance app. Um, and um, uh, you can do hotel bookings. This is the first app. You can buy airline tickets, of course. You can pay for. Uh, you can pay. Um, you can buy groceries potentially. Um, you can. You can do anything you want uh, in in a marketplace. Um, Binance Marketplace provides the infrastructure for crypto payments um, or or including fiat payments if you want to receive other stable coins or fiat. Um, and you have a uh, you have a, a very deep access into the Binance API. Uh, we can uh, um, users don't have to register. So uh, Binance today have the largest user base in crypto. Users don't have to re-register for your app. They can just, uh, just they can just use your app within the Binance Marketplace. Um, so it offers a very similar uh, experience for users. But on top of that, users have to worry less about security. Security is taken care of by, by Binance. Um, and it's just one place where you can use crypto for anything that crypto can do. Um, so it's a new program. We are still piloting it. And uh, but uh, it's out there. Um, it's it's working. So if you're interested, please do look at it. Do look at it. Um, again, it's another big experiment experiment for us. Um, I have very high hopes for it. Um, I think it will, it, will, it will be huge. Thank you. And seeing all these updates and developments, we have really interesting question from our user from Twitter. Based on your experience, CZ. What's the most important thing to keep in mind when building a startup? Because you're saying that Binance is still a startup. So what is your advice? OK. You might want to mention the uh, people. <laughs> this person's name is pretty hard to pronounce. <laughs> yeah. Moisiki with CZ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I think uh, well, there's a lot of different things you got to keep in mind when you're building a startup. Um, I think when you're building a startup, um, you gotta get most of the things right, and if any one thing fails, uh, you you can kill your startup. Um, and uh, even if you do everything right, you may not take off. Uh, you still need a bit of luck. Um, but I would say uh, the most important thing is to just build products other people use. Uh, if you build something, you have to check that somebody uh, will use it, and you also want to check you have stickiness. 
So if 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 you give it to the first uh, uh, few users, are they going to come back to it? Are they going to continue to use it? Um, uh, so um, I think just focus on product users. Um, so you got to have users. Uh, if you don't have users, then you you don't, you don't have anything else. So um, I think that's the most important thing to keep in mind. And this is why in Binance we always say user focused. Uh, everything uh, we try to build a culture where everything we discuss we put the user first. We say hey. What do the users want? What do the users want? Uh, if we make a decision, is this better for the users or not? So we and um, we follow the users as well. Uh, so if users like a certainly a slightly different product, we gotta repeat that our product. I'll give you one one good example. If if all the users want to use Dex and they suddenly don't want to use centralized exchanges, we'll be happy to abandon the centralized exchanges and we'll work on Dex. So um, uh, we I, I think the top the most important thing is uh, focus on the users. Thank you. Next question is from more like water user. How near are exchanges to become banks when API functionality like with hotels starts to bridge to fiat IRL transactions? Um, I think exchanges are somewhat different from banks uh, in, um, by definition. Um, so in the traditional financial industry, there are many different layers. Um, there are banks, there are brokers, there are exchanges, there are um, clearing settlement firms, the custodian firms, um, there's uh, advisory firms. So it's broken into many, many different layers. Um, with any new technology, the layers are usually combined, uh, are usually uh, sort of compressed. So um, before the internet, you have uh, publishers, you have um, you know uh, logistic companies, you have distributors, and then you have shops, and then you have you, you have buyers. Um, so uh, e-commerce kind of compresses that. So um, I think um, comparing exchanges to banks is um, it's, it depends on on your definition, on your view of banks or exchanges. I think today the exchanges does a lot more than a traditional exchange in that sense. Um, there's not, there's really not a very strong concept of a broker uh, in crypto. We actually have a broker program that that that, uh, that that broker concept is very different from the traditional broker concept. Um, and uh, we uh, we are very different from a bank, but even though we do hold custody of people's uh, 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 funds uh, for them to trade, and many people don't trade, they just use us as kind of a bank um, for crypto. And um, so um, it it depends on what you do, what, what your definition is. But I definitely do see that um, the roles merging in in the in the new in the new space. And um, yeah, so. Uh, I think I think we we kind of we are kind of already there, but depend on uh, depends on what on what your definition of a bank is. Uh, I, everybody have a different definition of it. Banks mean a lot of different things. There's investment banks, there's commercial banks, um, etc. But um, uh, in the most simple sense of a bank, um, we do uh, provide custodian services, and we provide uh, we pro we also provide much higher interest uh, uh, products for uh, savings, etc. Um, so we have a lot of similarities in in, in, uh, in that front already. So I think it's already happened. Thank you. And our next question is from Sif Croix. Other than music and the arts, how do you see NFT changing the current financial system that we have? Um, I think um, it's going to... I think the arts, music, movies, uh, cartoons, um, et cetera, are just the beginning of NFTs. Um, that's the most clear use case, but they may or may not may or may not be the biggest use case, to be very frank. Um, NFTs have very uh, a lot of very innovative use cases. Uh, for example, um, there's a big second, uh, well, at least I know that in some countries, there's a big secondhand um, uh, market for concert tickets. Uh, and but the problem is you, you get a lot of um, uh, uh, resellers that are not credible. You sometimes you buy fake tickets and you get scammed. Uh, NFTs can very easily solve that. Um, each concert ticket, for example, is on a specific date with a specific C number and it's unique. Um, so you can actually transact that uh, using NFT uh, uh, platforms, and it offers a very easy uh, secondary market for trading it. Uh, if you buy, say, look a, a seat at some uh, very hard to get concert, you can potentially trade it, right? And th th there's a market de determined value for it. And um, uh, also, um, if the uh, if the venues, if the uh, concert halls or arenas um, adopt the technology, they can just scan your uh, QR code and 
uh, that marks that NFT as being used. Um, and then uh, it actually saves a lot uh, on the sort of uh, paper uh, tickets, um, other mechanisms, et cetera. So there's a lot of really interesting use cases we have not explored with NFTs. Um, I think that's just one small example. There's, there could be many, many other examples that I don't know of. So um, I think with uh, so any new technology, the first obvious use case may all, may not be the uh, main use case. We usually uh, very often something new happens, and then the in, the entire industry shifts into a new new direction. Um, I think NFTs has a very high probability of that happening. Absolutely. Thank you, CD. Our next question is from from Hey Ho Crypto user on Twitter. I have read the most recent interview by CZ. I would like to ask his view on Bitcoin. The crypto industry will evolve from proof of work to proof of stake and into other algorithms. Do you think that there is a chance that the crowd will pick another coin to replace Bitcoin as the new digital gold? Um, so I think today um, I think Bitcoin is the grandfather or is, the, is the grandfather of uh, all crypto, um, and it has a it has a strong dominance, and um, um, it's also the coin that people learn about when they learn about crypto. So if you look if you learn about blockchain crypto, you gotta learn about Bitcoin. Um, it's kind of hard to avoid, and it's also it also has the higher mar highest market cap, and um, uh, because of that reason, I think it acts as the sort of a global reserves for cryptocurrencies. Um, so uh, it has a very strong network effect, and Bitcoin is also probably the most decentralized coin. We don't know who the founders are. There's really no one deciding the direction of Bitcoin, and every time there's a disagreement, uh, it's been uh, a fork the way to uh, to settle those dis disagreements. So I think from that fr uh, 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 from that point of view, I think Bitcoin is uh, is not gonna, is not uh, it's going to be there for a long, long time as the global uh, reserve currency for cryptocurrencies. Um, having said that, though, um, nothing will last forever. Um, uh, most things will get replaced uh, sooner or later. I think it's not inconceivable that would be a better version of a, a new cryptocurrency of an I don't know Bitcoin two, Bitcoin three, uh, or some or some other coin that could one day overtake Bitcoin. Um, I think uh, as as we evolve, nothing nothing lasts forever. So I don't. Um, but it, it may take. I don't know. It may take twenty years. It may take five years. It may take five hundred years. Who knows? Um, but most most things don't last forever. And but I strongly believe. Well, I know for sure that we're we're not gonna Bitcoin's not gonna disappear because we abandon it. Um, I think Bitcoin will continue to evolve. Um, something better uh, eventually will probably replace it. I don't know what it is yet. Uh, you could take twenty years. You could take fifty years. Fifty years. Who knows? Or it could be shorter. So um, that's kind of my view. Uh, it's very hard to predict the future, but um, I don't hold a very simplistic view that everything uh, or something lasts forever or um, etc. But today, I don't see I don't see anything on the horizon being close to replacing Bitcoin just yet. So I don't see anything today that could. At least not. At least it's not clear to me now. Uh, in the future, yeah, mm, uh, anything's possible in the future. Thank you, CZ. And next question is from Orion Pancake. How many hours do you sleep? Um, so um, I am actually not a very good sleeper. Um, uh, some days. Um, on the best day, I slept eight hours, and that's fantastic. I feel I felt amazing. Uh, but most days, I sleep around five six hours. Uh, last night, I only slept four hours. Not because I lose sleep uh, worrying about something. It was just like I was working on a document, and I went till until like four thirty ish, and then I wake up around eight thirty to prepare for my nine o'clock call. So um, yeah, so uh, and it's okay. Um, so I'm. Uh, I don't sleep that right uh, I don't sleep that regular like my sleeping patterns uh, 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 volatile <laughs> so but I but it's okay I, I'm not stressed I'm not um, um, yeah I'm not I'm not losing sleep because of anything it's just that uh, I typically have not not a so healthy sleeping habit <laughs> it is what it is but you're still keeping yourself productive and energetic this is amazing next question from Ash from Twitter as well. What is the most stressful part of leading Binance, if there is any? <laughs> I think for by most people's definitions, there's a lot of different stressful parts. Um, but you know, uh, people's tolerance get better once you're put into a position, once you have some training. So people are very elastic uh, 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 animals. So um, I think um, for me, most things are not that stressful. Um, whereas um, 
where I do sp spend most of my time on uh, is actually just people. So um, I think for, um, well, there's a saying that for CEOs, you should really take, just take a care of three things. Um, one is um, finding money uh, or finding uh, funding for the, uh, to make sure that you know, there's enough money to grow the business. Um, the second one is setting a general direction. And the third one is uh, uh, getting the right people. Um, so luckily for me, I don't have to worry too much about the first two. Um, we are self. Uh, we are profit. We are a profitable business. We have a healthy business, um, so we are not. We, we, we like. We, we're not as revenue generating as some of the biggest companies in the world, but we are sufficient for uh, for our growth. So we're we're, we're happy with that so to the point where we're not actively fundraising. So I don't have to spend time doing investor pitches, um, road shows, etc., which usually takes up a majority of the CEO's uh, time. So I save all of that time. Um, and then I also don't have to worry too much about strategy. Uh, we don't have a lot of strategy. Um, our strategies let people do what they, uh, do what they think is useful, and it's a very top uh, bottom up approach. And things just happen. Uh, somehow that seems to work so far. So I don't set top down strategies saying we gotta do this, we gotta do that, etc. So uh, given uh, and uh, that's a huge amount of time as well. So I save uh, probably more than eighty percent of the time based on those two. So I can spend all of that time on just sort of looking at how to get the best people onto the team. And do we have the right um, uh, uh, internal organizational uh, structures? Because our structure is very, very different from traditional structures. Uh, we run a very decentralized structure with teams all over the world and, um, um, and embracing the decentralized concept. And this is a very relatively new thing. So this is where I spend a lot of time trying to figure out what's, what are the best team structures, et cetera. And um, to be honest, there's no best team structure. I just want to figure out, hey, uh, are things working or not? Uh, I will bring the top talent in. Um, are they uh, are they incentivized correctly? Are they working on meaningful projects, et cetera? So um, I think how we organize ourselves is probably our biggest risk. Um, so that's where I spend most of our, most of my energy on. And so that's that's kind of the. Um, I would say it's it's not super stressful, but it's also like it's what, what I think about all day long. Thank you. And we have a question from Damien from YouTube, live chat. Susie, do you still turn off your phone and forget your work when you're on holidays? Um, I haven't taken a really phone off holiday for quite a while. And um, very recently, we began to institute what we call a block leave, or um, different people call it different, different, uh, different names, uh, where we ask, uh, myself included, uh, we ask our senior leadership teams uh, or just people you know, on our team to take two week vacations with the mo with their phone on, but with their chats off. So if we really have an emergency, we can still call them and say, "Hey, look, check your phone, please." Um, but we don't uh, for that two weeks. We actually do not want them to check chat messages, emails, uh, or this electronic communication, uh, and myself included. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to 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 two weeks of vacation like that. Um, this is this is this is the exercise that's very common in traditional financial institutions to make sure the organization does not have a single dependency on any one person, and each person has a full backup uh, or have uh, have backup capacity that if the person is not uh, is unavailable or quits or leaves or whatever um, for a period of time, the organization is completely fine. So we actually just started instituting this very recently. Uh, and I'm actually really looking forward <laughs> to my two weeks. Um, so um, yeah, so actually even before Binance started, for the, even two years before Binance started, I I've never taken a really real vacation. Um, I have taken sort of um, semi vacations, so I was kind of half on vacation, uh, but still half at work, like more than half at work. Um, so, uh, but I'm really looking forward to this block leave uh, uh, thing that uh, when it rotates to me, uh, we'll see how we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm actually very com I'm actually very confident Binance will be fine. It will be me that will be bored. So, <laughs> we'll see we'll see what happens. Susie is real hardcore. We have new question from Selenos from Binance uh, from YouTube live chat. Is there anything you would do differently now since you are more experienced? Oh, um, looking back, yeah, um, I, I, I would do a lot of well. If we let's uh, with hindsight, there's a lot of a lot of things we can change. Well, I would change for sure. But uh, hindsight is always uh, kind of cheap, to be honest. Um, but even today, if I start a new startup, um, I would do things quite differently. Um, there was a lot of things where I was a little bit uncertain about 
I think there was a lot of areas where I wasted a lot of time uh, focusing on the non-important stuff and kind of ignore the core uh, uh, the core areas of the business. Um, so whereas if I start over again uh, in a new venture, I'll be much much more uh, focused on, on the uh, on the core things of the business and be much more ruthless in uh, turning off noise, uh, ignoring random meeting requests, not worried about pissing off people, not not worried about being uh, being less polite to certain. Uh, Time wasting uh, 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 tasks or people or uh, requests, etc. So I'll, I'll be much more focused. So um, this is the things uh, I learned over the years. Uh, but uh, I think today um, I can be a lot more focused than before. Um, so where I look back, especially before Binance, um, I spent a lot of time. I wasted a lot of time on random stuff that are not super productive. Looking back, um, so um, yes, yeah, so I think basically. Um, the thing I would recommend is basically figure out what, fig, like prioritize, 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 figure out what's important and just focus on those things. Sure, thank you. Our next question is from Dorian Babayev from YouTube. CZ, any inheritance plan on Binance? Uh, this, uh, well, the inheritance plans means a couple of different things, potentially means a couple of different things here. Um, I think most likely means succession plan. Um, so yes, absolutely. Um, for uh, for myself, I think any CEO should not be longer than ten years, um, and I actually want to retire somewhere between five to ten years. Uh, I've been I've been running uh, Binance close to uh, three something years old, close to four. Um, so I hopefully maybe I can retire in two years, maybe longer in six years. Uh, we'll see. Um, I'm actually hoping to be able to uh, transition the CEO, CEO role to somebody else within the next, within the next uh, few years. So, um, and I think that's better for the organization because if you have one person as CEO for longer than, for like even close to 10 years, um, a lot of the uh, concepts uh, are stale. Um, a lot of, a lot of um, you don't get new ideas into the organization. There's not enough dynamic dynamicism uh, in the organization. Uh, it's just my way of thinking, uh, which may be good, maybe not good. Um, but I, uh, it may be good. But if we stick into one way for too long, it's usually not so good. So having uh, having fresh thoughts, having fresh leadership, having fresh directions, uh, even if we sort of go into a few different directions, shake up things a bit, that's generally good for the organization. And uh, within Binance now, we uh, uh, for our senior leadership team, we actually in, uh, implemented rotation programs. Uh, we actually force, uh, not force, we actually do rotate the top senior leaders into different roles. Um, and we're already doing that. And the, the guys in our team know. So um, um, yeah, so I, we do have very strong succession plans in place. Um, so yeah, um, I think any organization should be strong enough to not depend on anybody, especially not the founder, uh, co-founders, etc. So um, yeah, so um, we, we we absolutely want to do that. Uh, well, I think Binance is kind of already there. We we still need a little bit more time to sort of polish it a bit further, but we, we're kind of there. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from St from YouTube chat. If CZ couldn't lead Binance as CEO for some reason one day, is Binance ready to run business without CZ? I think today, look, uh, to be honest, I think today if I if I just left abruptly, Binance will be fine. Um, uh, there will be some concerns in the community, et cetera, because I'm more the, uh, unfortunately, more more of the face towards the community. But I actually don't do that much in Binance. <laughs> um, I think most people have the misconception that I'm, I'm everywhere, I'm managing everything, et cetera. But I don't manage anything operationally in Binance, anything that uh, that's operationally uh, uh, important, uh, I did uh, deliberately decoupled from me um, to the point where actually um, I do not ha actually have logins to our backend systems. Uh, so when people have customer support request complaints, um, I actually have to uh, I actually normally am not logged into the customer support portal. Um, I do log in, I, I actually, actually recently asked for a login account as just so that I can look at some of the complaints. Um, but I'm not doing any of the sort of operational stuff. Um, and also Binance has very strong leaders in almost in every um, um, either functional group or business units. Um, so I think today if I just you know took a vacation, it'd be fine. But some of our users will panic a little bit because they don't know how Binance is actually really run. Um, but I think Binance would be completely fine. Um, but uh, uh, there are uh, 
but we don't want that kind of abrupt changes uh, uh, into with any organization. So uh, we want to build a process where there's continu continuity, but we also want a process where we do we we are uh, we are able to bring on new leaders, um, both at the uh, at the mid level, senior levels, and at the CEO level. So um, that's something we we do want to do. Thank you. Next question is from Mira Agustina from YouTube chat. CZ, what is your strongest motivation to make crypto community larger and larger? Yeah, so for me, I think it's just increasing the freedom of money. Um, so my view is um, um, any time in history we are when we are able to increase the freedom of something without sacrificing other aspects, including security, compliance, ease of use, etc., if we can keep those the same, and then we can increase the free, the, the, the the freedom level, um, we our civilization advances. So if you look back in history, um, we uh, the freedom of information, the internet, um, um, the freedom of speech in some countries, um, freedom of press, freedom of print, uh, freedom freedom of printing, freedom of education, and before that, freedom of uh, freedom from slavery. Anytime we are able to increase the freedom, our civilization advance to the next stage uh, or, to, or to the next level, um, provided that we don't we don't we don't sacrifice the other aspects like security, compliance, etc. So I think today crypto offers a unique opportunity for us to increase the freedom of money uh, a, a little bit at a time. Uh, we don't have to take giant leap forward. We don't have to. It's not black and white. Um, and for me, like I just want to contribute to this evolution. For me, this is a very, very meaningful thing to do. Um, this is more meaningful than anything else I could do in my life. Um, so um, I could I could be sitting on a beach. Um, I can play golf all day. I can do some other hobby. But none of those things are as in, anywhere close to as interesting or as impactful or as meaningful compared to knowing that I'm helping to increase the freedom of money for people all around the world. And because of that, people's lives are going to improve. So it sounds a little bit grandiose and you know, um, uh, uh, maybe even a little bit arrogant, but this is honestly the thing that I feel that's very meaningful to me for me to do. And uh, for Binance as a whole, we think this is a, a very meaningful thing for us to do. And so this is why, why, why are we here? So in order to do this, we want to provide more access to crypto. So we want to build products that provide people more access into the crypto world. Um, so we have the exchange, which provides access to liquidity. You can buy and sell. We have wallets. Uh, you can uh, give you access to hold or store value. Uh, we have informational sites like CoinMarketCap or uh, Binance Academy educational sites, which provides access to info crypto information. Uh, we have Binance Pay, uh, which provides to uh, access to e-commerce platforms or marketplaces. Uh, we have uh, we have um, a Binance supported uh, 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 blockchains, which provides access to DeFi, um, NFTs, etc. So we want to, and there's a lot more that we can do. But uh, we just want to provide more access into the crypto world. Um, so that's basically what uh, what we do, uh, and what, well, that's basically what we think we're doing, uh, what we try to do. <laughs> yeah. Hello. I think we might have lost our moderator. Um, Karina, are you still there? Yep. Can you uh, hear me? Yeah, yeah, OK. I can hear you now. Maybe, maybe okay. my problem, yeah. So Bob Marley from YouTube chat is asking, CZ, how are you? How is your health? Uh, my health is actually not too bad. So. Um, uh, um, Health-wise, I've done health checks every uh, well, every couple of years. Um, my last health check is very comprehensive. It's very good. Uh, I do have a back problem. I have a herniated disc, uh, which I did two microsurgeries on last year. Um, but and I, I now I'm on a slow recovery path. So uh, um, it's actually getting a lot better. My lifestyle is not implement Im impacted anymore. I can sit. I can walk. I can not so much jog, but I can swim. Um, so I'm doing a lot more. I still exercise every day. Um, so I'm doing more water uh, level sports, uh, whereas jogging have like a kind of impact on uh, kind of compression on the back. So I try not to jog anymore. But um, um, I don't do any extreme sports. But like on water, water sports are usually better because if you fall, you fall in the water, and it's kind of uh, it's kind of okay. So uh, I've been doing more swimming, more sort of just you know. Um, uh, uh, different sports, uh, 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 different sports that's not so impactful. So health-wise, I think I'm 
pretty good uh, uh, compared compared to like probably 99% of the population. So I think I'm really up there. Um, feel pretty good. I also think that my mental state is really strong. Uh, I am very lucky to be working on things I like to do and I, that I think I'm hugely meaningful. So um, I get up every, every morning relatively energized. Um, I sometimes, you know, during the day, I, I may get tired or may get sleepy. Um, and sometimes I just take a nap between calls. Um, happens as well. So I take a 30 minute nap, et cetera. So health wise, um, pretty good. Uh, but I am feeling that I'm getting older. <laughs> so uh, I have more white hair now. Uh, um, yeah, so I'm not as act I'm not as strong as, uh, 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 when, as when I was young. Bitcoin prices go up uh, humongously. I don't get overly excited. Uh, when the market crashed last uh, last week, I wasn't that stressed. Um, I know a lot of people are in stress. I feel for them, but I, I wasn't stressed myself. I'm like, look, this is business as usual. Um, and uh, we just got to continue to build. And so I, have, I maintain a very stable mentality as well. So things are, things are pretty good. Um, nothing, nothing too special. No. But I'm getting old, so <laughs> getting there. Thank you, Susie. We have a question from Martish and some Czech Mac. Uh, they're both quite similar. No new project has been added to Launchport over the last months or so. Do you have any plans for it? Yeah, so for Launchpad, that's a really good question. Um, I do want to explain this. Um, Launchpad was launched <laughs> in the best of markets in January 2019. Um, that was actually uh, a uh, that was at the bottom um, of the Bitcoin price around 3,000, and that actually kicked off kicked out kicked off a few things. Um, well, at least there was correlation of that timing. Um, but Launchpad um, in the bull market is actually quite hard to do um, for a number of reasons. In a bull market, every investor is rushing, wanting, uh, uh, wanting to get whatever projects uh, 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 are available. Um, the strong projects in, in bull market have a commanding, um, uh, uh, they have the need, they have the sort of um, uh, bargaining power. Um, there's a lot of users chasing them. They're not short of funds. They can raise funds on on their own without going through Launchpad. For the Launchpad projects, we like pro we like projects that are long term driven by very strong founders, mission driven, and they they don't care too much uh, too much about how much funds they're going to raise. Uh, so typically, we actually negotiate the valuations of the Launchpad pr projects down. Uh, than what they can normally raise on market. But these days, in a bull market, it's very hard to do. Um, the strong projects, they can just launch their own, I, I don't know, IDO, IFO, I, ICO, uh, and raise money. And it's actually very difficult for us to uh, negotiate those type of deals on behalf of our users. Um, so, and there's a lot of uh, not so high quality projects that want to go on Binance Launchpad, but we, we have a high bar. Um, so is, Launchpad is actually harder to do in bull markets than in bear markets. Uh, in bear markets, we have the bargaining power um, and we can we can bargain on behalf of our users. Look, we have the largest user base in, in crypto. Uh, we can give you uh, we can give you credibility. We give you we give you um, uh, we give you basically endorsement go by going through Launchpad. That's a uh, that's a strong you you're being vetted and selected by Binance, etc. In in bear markets, projects care about those things uh, more. And uh, in bear markets, the projects that still want to launch a token are usually the ones who are mission driven. Um, they don't care about the bear market so much. Whereas in a bull market like we are in today, it's actually pretty hard to find projects who only want to raise two, three million dollars at a valuation of, I don't know, 20, 30 million. Um, and um, um, now project valuations are going crazy and it's kind of hard to find those projects. There are still strong projects in, 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 in the ecosystem, but their valuations are very high. So uh, we, we have just had a very tough time finding good projects uh, for Launchpad. Not, not so much the, uh, none of the projects are good. It's just that finding good projects that, will, that are willing to raise at lower valuations. Um, so that unfortunately has been more difficult in, in bull markets, which is actually new to me. Um, so I had this discussion with uh, Launchpad with our Launchpad team, and um, that those are the reasons they they actually uh, articulated, which makes a lot of sense after hearing it. So that's as much as I know. Um, and so, uh, but it's not it does not mean that Launchpad has stopped. Um, uh, we will continue to do Launchpad projects. Uh, I don't know when. I don't know when is the next one. I don't know how many. Um, but we'll continue to look for strong projects that have a uh, strong team, strong products, strong, strong delivery, strong execution capabilities, um, and long-term driven. 
and ideally at a lower market cap. Uh, the, the guys who are not really sort of raising at a super high market caps, wanting wanting to maximize all the value, etc. So we want we want people to be able to participate and in the launchpad and then see the projects grow. Um, so that's kind of our uh, that's kind of our design philosophy for launchpad. It's more difficult doing bull markets. Thank you. Next question is from Sentinel Crypto YouTube chat. CZ, I love Binance. When does Binance card will be available in more countries? As I live in Dubai and it's not yet available here, I'm so excited for it to be launched. Yeah, so um, the Binance card is actually a very, very, very uh, attractive product. Um, uh, I use it every day. It's, it's, it's fantastic. So I keep it pretty near me all the time. Um, and um, um, but originally, uh, I, I believe the Binance uh, card team was trying to uh, launch it globally in country by country or region by region. I think they launched. Well, we're now currently launched in Euro Europe first, but the demand in Europe has been overwhelming. And um, so they have been. And to be honest, um, they've been. We've been trying to solve a lot of the product uh, uh, issues. Um, there are very little issues here and there. Like uh, sometimes the transaction gets rejected for um, unknown reasons, and the customer doesn't know what's going on. Um, there are times where we try to ship a card to a user, it gets lost on the way somehow. Um, so there, and there, 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 there are very little things we're trying to fix. And the team's really busy with those kind of things where they have not been able to launch in other markets. Uh, where uh, whereas the BD, uh, the business development cycles for this additional markets, the partners we we, uh, we need to depend on. Uh, uh, have been uh, established and have been sort of signed. So um, I do think that we will be launching additional markets very soon. Um, I don't know in which order, which which countries are next. Um, I actually don't have that information, uh, uh, just to be very frank. Uh, I'm not that detailed. Uh, I don't know that, that level of detail. Um, but I, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, bear with us. It is launching in multiple, uh, in, in countries, uh, in places all around the world. Um, and it is a very, very convenient product to have. Yeah, so thank you for your support and please be patient for a little bit longer. You should get there soon. Thank you. Next question is from Claudi Dragici. Binance is centralized exchange. Will it be decentralized exchange in the future? Um, so yeah, Binance, we have a Binance DEX uh, running on Binance chain uh, from 2019. So, um, we actually offer both. Uh, we both offer both centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges. Um, we also launched Binance Smart Chain, which is a platform for many DeFi projects, which decentralized, you know, decentralized finance, decentralized um, uh, uh, liquidity pools, etc., uh, which can be viewed as exchanges. People can trade. Uh, people can trade against them. So we actually offer both, um, and we are also continuing our investment in the DeFi space. Uh, also NFT space, et cetera. So we invest very heavily in decentralized technologies to the point where, look, mm, if the centralized exchange disappears tomorrow, I think we'll be fine. Um, I think Binance, uh, Binance uh, our sort of what we call the sort of centralized team, um, we'll find other business models that will work and uh, we'll, we'll be able to make a living. Um, and our business will not be that impacted, even, even if the centralized exchange business sh uh, shuts down tomorrow. So I'm very confident about that. So we, um, many people have the wrong perception that we're really married to the centralized exchange. Um, yes, today it is our main revenue source, um, but it doesn't have to be that tomorrow. I, uh, and there's more, always more opportunities tomorrow than there were yesterday. So um, um, we offer many products for free today. Um, so um, uh, we offer, uh, so, but, uh, you know, we could monetize them if we want, but right now our centralized exchange uh, monetization is strong enough to sustain, sustain us. And uh, we feel that we can offer the other products mostly for free. So, um, so th there's another company who did this really well. Um, that's Google. So if you look at Google, Google has a uh, ecosystem of businesses for the internet. They, they provide many infrastructure services for the internet, but most of them are free. So uh, they only monetize on the search engine. Um, the search engine is their uh, main uh, bread and butter, uh, main revenue generator. But everything else, maps, um, I don't know, uh, email, um, uh, everything else is relatively free. Um, they started charging for photos recently, I think. Um, but uh, almost every other, uh, most of the services are free. Um, so I think right now Binance has adopt, adopts a very similar model where we have a strong corp, uh, uh, centralized exchange business that's re that's revenue generating to sustain the uh, team and the the growth. 
uh, it allows us to provide most of the other services for free. Like our wallets are free, like Trust Wallet is 100% free. We fund the development, we fund the team. Um, most, uh, many other services on Binance are, uh, in the Binance ecosystem are like that. Um, so uh, we'll continue to do that. But one day the centralized exchange may go away, um, but there's plenty of other businesses that we could monetize that we haven't. Um, so we just need to monetize enough to sustain our growth and um, that'd, be, that, that, that'd be fine. Thank you, Suzy. We have a couple of minutes left, so let's take two more questions. And the next question is from Jun Cha. What's your favorite dab on BSC and why? Uh, so I don't really, um, so I want to stay away from picking favorites because um, it could be uh, it could be misinterpreted, but I do endorse a couple of projects that are relatively closer to Binance, um, uh, 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 so I know them a little bit better. Um, so I think Pancake is by far the highest volume project on, on Binance uh, Smart Chain, and they they have been bringing uh, very strong volumes uh, for us. Um, I do know the I do know the creators. I do know the I do know the team uh, to some extent, and um, uh, we help bootstrap it as well. So uh, so uh, I, I can endorse that. Um, Venus is another project that's associated with Binance. Uh, it's, rent, it, it's created by the Swipe team, even though now the governance have been handed back to the community. Um, so um, those projects are more closely associated with Binance, and um, um, so those are the two projects that I can I can name. The other projects on Binance, I'm very I'm very hesitant to name. Just I don't want to play favoritisms, etc. Um, also, I actually don't know a lot of the projects that well. Um, as far as as much as it's called Binance Smart Chain, um, I actually don't spend a lot of time doing DeFi stuff myself. I'm pretty busy running a, a business. Um, I'm not a typical uh, DeFi user actually. Uh, I did play around with the technology to understand it, but I don't do like I don't do staking. I don't know. Do, I don't do farming. I don't know. Do, I don't do um, all of this uh, things that no, a normal a normal DeFi user do. Uh, I'm just. I'm busy with running a business, so um, so I, I I actually can't name the other projects. I don't want to play favoritisms. Thank you. And part in words, Suzy, can you share one piece of life changing advice from Alan Pax on Twitter? Oh, uh, that's a hard one. Uh, I think there's really no secrets in for me. There's no secrets in life. There's there's really no uh, secret sauce. Um, I think just work hard, work smart. Um, is is that's the life changing advice. Um, don't 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 chase shiny pro uh, objects. Uh, just you know, um, settle down. Um, be prepared to work for multiple. Be prepared to work hard for multiple years, and something will come along. You you'll get better at whatever you're working on, and and then you'll get lucky. So um, you, at the same time, you want to be smart about how you work. You don't want to like just you know um, work work uh, working a very uh, uh, um, uh, sort of repeated fashion without any improvements, etc. Um, I think we live in a mostly intelligent world today, and um, intelligent work is really what's needed. Um, yeah, so I don't really have any sort of um, special magic sauce or device that if I had, I would have shared it like a long time ago, and then it wouldn't be any secret anyway. So um, I think just work hard. Um, uh, uh, my advice is keep a stable, uh, keep your emotions stable. Um, don't get excited. Don't get too uh, down. Um, don't get too depressed. And just continue to work. Um, uh, luck comes around to everybody, and you just got to be ready to catch it when, when it comes. Amazing. Thank you, Suzy. Yep. Um, cool. Yeah, I think our time is almost up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to take a couple of more questions, or you have another meeting? I actually do have another meeting in about a minute or so, but we can probably take one question. Yeah. Okay. So there is an interesting question from Wang Fang. Zizi, what do you think about the env environmental issue with crypto? Um, to be very honest, I think the um, the electricity cost from for mining crypto is a very minor thing um it's it's uh i think uh, michael seller um uh tweeted tweeted the electric electricity use uh, in the world i i forgot the units but like uh, 1600 uh, 16000 units however you measure electricity is produced every year of which a third is wasted so uh, um uh i think it's 160000 uh, produced 50000 are wasted 
and then um, mm, mm, uh, Bitcoin mining cost 120 of those units. So it's a very small portion of the energy use in the world. And um, uh, I think I think um, for whatever reason, or well, I know for whatever reason, well, I, I think the fact that Elon Musk is paying attention to it brings up all of this topic over and over again. But I think it's a in terms of priorities, uh, it's, it's one of the least uh, uh, cryptocurrencies is probably the most energy efficient currency in the, on the planet today. Uh, almost every other currency is more energy um, is less energy efficient, more energy hungry. If you count how many uh, how much energy is used to maintain those currencies, so I think it's one of those things. Okay, yes, they are mining rigs and they use the electricity, and you can calculate it, and people pe people calculate it. But uh, it's very difficult to calculate how much currency traditional uh, how much electricity traditional currencies use, and people don't calculate it. It's one of those typical fallacies where if you can calculate something, you look at it, you can't just ignore it. Um, so it is it is one of those things I think we're kind of misprioritizing our energies on. Um, it's fine. It's a, it's a decentralized world. Anybody can focus their energy on anything they want. So now there's a console being set up on how to mine Bitcoins better. That's great. Uh, we don't do any Bitcoin mining. Um, uh, uh, so I'm not, uh, we have a mining pool, but we don't do, we don't have mining forms. Um, so Binance Smart Chain is a POS driven blockchain and um, it's energy efficient. So. It's a problem I haven't spent a lot of energy on, um, my personal energy on. Um, so if other people want to spend the energy on that, that's great. Um, that's fine. Uh, but I think it's a minor problem. Uh, I think people are way, uh, people, uh, uh, people are blowing that that problem way out of proportion. It is what it is. Yeah. All right, I think I gotta go. Um, the other guys are kind of peeing me. Sure. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for your time. All right, guys. See you. Thank you so much for listening in. And uh, until next time, I'll try to do this more often. I think this one, we had a two or three months gap. I was trying Clubhouse in between, but um, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to this format uh, going forward. So yeah, thanks for watching and have a nice day, uh, nice evening, wherever you are. Cheers, guys.